Hi everyone, and welcome back to Simple Web Logic. Today we are talking all about the Rails asset pipeline, what it is, how to use it, and ultimately in this mini series we'll be taking a purchase template and optimizing it for use within Rails. Over the last week we've been emailing back and forth with a viewer named Cheyenne, and he told us he's been trying to learn Ruby on Rails as his first language and framework. We talked a little bit about how he got started, where he was going to learn, and like most people learning Ruby, he was using some websites that the general Rails community don't really like. We asked him where he thought he was having the most trouble, and he told us the asset pipeline. After talking to him a little longer, we had him send us the template that he purchased, and with that, we'll be writing a series on how to properly prep the template for Rails. So first off, what exactly is the Rails Asset Pipeline? We could have an hour-long video just on the theory of the Asset Pipeline, but we're not going to do that. This video is going to be all about what the pipeline really is in simple terms. So, the Asset Pipeline, simply put, is a framework to compress JavaScript and CSS. Now, as of Rails 4, it's been extracted from the core code and moved into its own gem, and that gem is called Sprockets. There are three main places that you can place your files for use with the asset pipeline. That is app slash assets, and this is for the assets that are owned by the application, so your images, JavaScript, and CSS directly owned by the application. The second place is lib slash assets. And this is for assets that are your own libraries that don't really fit into the scope of the application or for libraries that are shared across applications. And the third is vendor assets. These are assets that are owned by outside entities. If you manually place one here, remember that they need to be rewritten to use the asset pipeline helpers. So now that we know where to put our assets, what are these helpers that we just spoke about? In Rails, we use a template language called ERB, and that stands for Embedded Ruby. And like all languages, ERB has opening and closing tags, and you can see them here. We have our opening tag, and we have our ending tag. There are three main classes for the asset pipeline helpers, and those are style sheets, JavaScript, and images. To include a style sheet, you may do something like, like this here. And likewise, for JavaScript, Now, caveat to these is if you're using the Turbo Links gem that is included by default in Rails 4. Now, what this gem does is check to see if an asset has been updated, and if so, it loads the changes. Now, if you're using that, all you really do is add data Turbo Links track true, and you do that to both your style sheet and your JavaScript. Now we have the image tag left. Can you guess what the image tag syntax looks like? If you weren't able to guess what the image tag syntax looks like, that's okay. So far, we've learned about three helpers. These helpers are for use within your template files. But what about your CSS files? How do you deal with images with that? And the asset pipeline automatically evaluates ERB. So basically, any file you add the ERB extension to gives you access to the helpers. For instance, we're going to go ahead and create a file 
called ERB example dot CSS dot ERB and now we can write a simple class like this now that really is as simple as it gets but if you're using SAS things are a little different in, in that we would have a different file so we will just name this one example.css and you can have the last portion of it either be SAS or SCSS and I usually go with SCSS myself and this comes into play if you're using the SAS Rails gem. Now this gem gives us three helpers. Asset path, asset URL, and asset data URL. But what's the difference between these helpers? I could build an asset path class like this. And this gives us a relative path. This is the method that I generally use. Now, if you wanted to do a full URL, for example, for an external resource, you can do it simple as that. This would be good for, like, if you put your image assets into a statically hosted CDN or something like that. Uh, now, this gem gives us some convenience helpers as well. These include image, font, video, audio, JavaScript, and style sheet. And these all include both the dash path and dash URL variations, kind of like this. Image path, image.png, and image URL, image.png. The last one is asset data URL. Now I've personally never used this. What it does is it returns a URL to the base64 encoded asset at the specified path. So since I've never actually used this, this portion comes directly from the SAS Rails README that you can be that can be found on GitHub. So using ERB, we would do asset data URL rails.png and this would return URL data image PNG base 64 IVBORW0K dot 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 now we see how to use the asset pipeline within our CSS files. So let's look at the manifest files. These are our manifest files, the application.js and the application.css. So the default application JSS looks like this. You see that it requires jQuery and requires turbo links. If you don't want to use turbo links, remove it from here and remove the gem. I usually completely get rid of the require tree. And the reason that I get rid of the require tree is because I prefer to have more control over what gets loaded and when. When you use the require tree, there's no guarantee that things are going to be loaded in the correct order. When you do it here, require like that, it is processed from the top down. The same goes for my application.css. I'll actually normally change this to application.css.scss, but I actually get rid of everything. The reason I get rid of everything, the require cell includes application.css if there's anything in there to be done. But I use this file 
as an index of assets, and I keep all CSS and external files for modularity and code cleanliness. So being that I like to use the SAS Rails gem, I will use the at import. This means I can create variables and mix-ins that are available throughout all of my files. Using sprockets, they would only be available within the document they were defined in, which kind of defeats the purpose. So, that's it for this video. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what the Rails asset pipeline is and how you use it. We've learned about where we can place our assets, some of the basic syntax for ERB helpers, and a little bit about the SAS Rails gem and the helpers that go along with it. In our next video, we'll be taking a look at the purchase template Cheyenne sent us and getting it prepped for use with Rails. We'll be using the SAS Rails gem for this, despite that it's not sassy CSS. Now at the beginning of this video, we talked about how Cheyenne was using some resources that are looked down upon in the general Rails community. What places do you go to learn Ruby and Rails? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw in this video and want to see more, please be sure to subscribe to our channel where we aim to release a new video every week. You can also visit us on Twitter, Facebook, GitHub, and of course our website at simpleweblogic.com. So until next time, happy coding.